Yep, they did it. Six years after the last largest known prime number was found, a number that consisted of over 24 million digits, they've just found a new largest prime number known to mankind. And this prime number is around 17 million digits longer than the previous largest known prime number, and this is the new largest prime in the world. There are, of course, larger primes out there, but this is the largest one that's made itself known to us. Of course, it's more like us going on a rabbit hunt for these things rather than them showing themselves, but anyways, it has 41 million 24,320 digits. That's just how big and massive this new prime is. And to people who have spent some time in the discussion regarding largest known primes, the form of this prime will look familiar. It's one less than a power of two. Prime numbers like this are called Mersenne primes. So a Mersenne prime is a prime number of the form two to the p minus one, where p is itself a prime number. Anything like two to the n minus one, where n is composite, any number like this will actually be composite, so that power of 2 has got to be prime. Just because it has a prime power doesn't mean that this expression is actually going to be prime, uh, but in fact in ancient times when these numbers were first studied and for quite some time after, it was thought that all numbers of this form were in fact prime. I mean, the numbers got so big that without electronic computers, it was pretty difficult to rely reliably check the primeness of these numbers, even for small prime values of p. We now know the first example of a number of this form that's not prime is the 11th such number, 2 to the 11 minus 1, which is 2047. This is not prime, it is in fact composite, it equals 23 times 89. So not all of these numbers are prime, but why is it the case that so many of the largest known prime numbers are taking on the form of Mersenne primes? Well, it's just because when we get to numbers of this size, naturally verifying whether or not they're prime, checking that fact, is very computationally demanding, but these numbers happen to be a bit easier to check. They're one less than a power of two, which makes them, relatively speaking, easier to work with. Now let's talk about that process of how they would check these numbers of the form 2 to the p minus 1 for primality. It's a whole thing called a GIMPS, the Great Internet Mersenne Prime Search. This is a community of dedicated nerds, which I say respectfully, that uh, contribute their computers and their computational power to be used to run software to check Mersenne numbers for primality and see are they prime or are they not. Now, interestingly, the initial check on this new largest prime was just a probabilistic uh, check. So the numbers go through what's called the Fermat primality test. And this is a probabilistic test which says, yes, this number probably is prime, but further testing is necessary to verify for sure. So, the Fermat primality test reported that this new prime number was probably prime actually on October 11th of this year in Dublin, Ireland. This primality test, just to give you the gist of it, is based on a fundamental result in elementary number theory called Fermat's Little Theorem. Fermat's little theorem can be stated in various ways, but one thing it tells us is that for a prime number p and a positive integer a, if p does not divide a, which we can write like this, so a is not divisible by that prime number p, for example, a could simply be less than p, in which case it's certainly not divisible by p. If this is the case, what this implies is that a to the power of p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. If you don't know what this congruent modulo stuff means, said another way, it um, this would imply that a to the p minus 1 minus 1 is a multiple of p. So just, just again, said another way, this says that if p does not divide a, then a to the p minus 1 minus 1 
is divisible by p. If you do know how modular congruence works, then of course it just means that. Now Fermat's little theorem tells us that this is the case for a prime number p, that's when this applies. But it turns out that this congruence relationship, generally speaking, is not going to be true if p is composite. It might be true, but it's unlikely to be true when p is composite. So if you took a composite p and then some number a that p didn't divide, then this is just unlikely to be true in that situation for a composite number. And so that's the probabilistic test. If a random a is chosen that's not divisible by p and this relationship does hold, then there's a good chance that p is prime. On the other hand, if this congruence doesn't hold for the randomly chosen A that's not divisible by P, then we would know for sure that P is composite, because if it were prime, this congruence would have to hold. So if a number passes that Fermat primality test, then we think we have a prime number on our hands, and if it's a Mersenne prime, then we can check for sure whether or not it's prime using the Lucas-Lemer test. So in fact, on October 11th, that's when in Dublin, Ireland, they checked and uh, saw that this huge new prime number was probably prime. And then on October 12th in San Antonio, Texas, on a different computer, the Lucas Lemur test was uh, carried out to confirm for sure that this number is prime. Now, this test works, uh, it's based on a sequence. The sequence is defined like this. SI, we'll call it. And the first term of this sequence, when I equals zero, we'll say, is equal to four. Otherwise, we can calculate subsequent terms based on preceding terms, just like this, si minus one squared minus two. So to calculate subsequent terms, you take the preceding term, square it, and subtract two. So the first few terms of this sequence would be four, and then to get the next term, square this, which is 16, and subtract two, which is 14. Then to get the next term, square this, which is 196, and subtract 2, which is 194, and so on. Then, quick bit of notation here before we state how this test reaches a conclusion. We're going to use the notation mp to represent this Mersenne number, 2 to the power of p minus 1, where it's understood that p is prime, and of course this Mersenne number may or may not be prime. So then, how we use the test to reach a conclusion about whether or not MP is prime is like this. MP is guaranteed to be prime if the P minus tooth term of this sequence, so S P minus two, is a multiple of MP which would mean that it is congruent to zero mod mp. For a small example with very manageable numbers, we can look at the Mersenne prime m3. Three is prime, so this number is two to the three minus one, which of course is eight minus one, which is seven, which is prime. So this is a Mersenne prime, and we could use a lucas lemur test to confirm that this number is prime. Remember, in the sequence, we need to look at sp minus two and check if that's a multiple of the uh, number that is to be checked, which is in this case 7. So for M3, we would have to look at S3 minus 2, which of course is S1. So not S0, the initial term of the sequence, but S1, the second term of the sequence, which is 14. Now indeed, 14 is a multiple of 7. It is congruent to 0 mod in this case, M3, which is seven. And so indeed we confirm via this test that M3 is prime. Of course we know it is because it's seven. Now, as we mentioned earlier, the first potential candidate to be a Mersenne prime, which fails to be a Mersenne prime is M11. So if we run the Lucas Lemur test on this number, uh, we're not going to get something that's divisible by MP at the end. So with M11, we'd have to go all the way up to S9, and you can run the computations yourself. It turns out that this term in the sequence is congruent to 17 
36 mod M11. This means that the ninth term of the sequence is not a multiple of M11, which happens to be 2047, and so by the Lucas Lemur test, we would have that this is not a prime number. But that's how they did it. First, the Fermat primality test found that this new number was probably prime, and then the Lucas Lemur test confirmed indeed that we have this new prime with over 41 million digits. It's absolutely wild. But all of this also ties back to something in the fourth century BC, when Euclid proved something interesting about a type of number called a perfect number. And I'd like to finish with this. Perhaps you've heard of perfect numbers, perhaps not, but a small example of such a number is 6. We say that a number is perfect if it's equal to the sum of its proper divisors. The proper divisors of 6 are the divisors of 6 that are positive and not equal to 6. So those numbers would be 1, 2, and 3. Notice when we add those proper divisors, we get 6, and that's why 6 is what's called a perfect number. Now, just like prime numbers, finding perfect numbers is pretty hard, and they have fascinated mathematicians for centuries. And what Euclid proved is that there's actually a very intimate connection between perfect numbers and prime numbers. Euclid proved that if you've got a Mersenne prime, of course they weren't called Mersenne primes in Euclid's time, but if 2 to the p minus 1 uh, is prime, what Euclid proved is that you actually get a perfect number out of this. What you have is the number 2 to the p minus 1, so p minus 1 in the exponent, multiplied by 2 to the p minus 1, the uh, Mersenne prime in question, this product is going to be perfect. So with this new largest prime number, which is over 40 million digits long, we also now have a new largest perfect number, thanks to that theorem from Euclid. So that's our new largest perfect number, this product, which has about 82 million digits. It's absolutely colossal. So if you found this stuff interesting, be sure to check out the great internet Mersenne Prime Search. You could download their software, and maybe you could be the next one to find a colossal prime number. It's also worth mentioning, uh, you know, we have very many huge known prime numbers, but there are definitely prime numbers between these gigantic primes that we just don't know yet, because they have forms that are just harder to check, and people are not checking them so much. So still lots of primes to be found, not just big bigger primes, but smaller ones too. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet.